Host Eric is my name, and this is Talking with Famous People. I want to say it's all a Curtisarian game. These statements that I make. These words that come forth from my mouth. Tonight I present them in most affected fashion. Not natural. Though that is what is often sought. People seek not that which they cannot believe, for the disbelief itself is reason enough to leave. Now, if you are one who can suspend your disbelief a moment, friend, then stay a while and listen here, as I shall tell a tale dear to anyone who cares about the lives we lead and getting out alive. What's that, you query, cannot be, to live beyond one's life, you see, would then require eternity, and no such place nor time exists, for if it did, then why would wist full thinking ever be allowed, there'd be no need. A heavenly cloud would await each of us at the end of every day, that is to say, if days are defined as lifetimes lived, a day, a thousand, ten thousand, gives enough experiential opportunity for even he who is quite greedy. For time and chances, opportunities indeed, adventures still to be had, and lead others perhaps if one must, but avoid it if one can, for one does not trust these mechanisms of hierarchy to lead one on his way. Indeed, he finds them remarkably unfit for leadership, is he? It's hard to say. It depends, perhaps, on circumstance, or if he sees enough stimulation to captivate his soul, then he shall bring us forth, and we shall victory, Bell told, but shall he yet approach it with insufficient vigor? And then yet we shall see, indeed, the wrong end of the trigger, for no leader shall he be, but leaderless would we then enter into battle from a place where he lost interest in. Now, fortunately, any battle worth its called and salt and cold would surely then provide sufficient, adequate, and plenty coal to bring him forth to challenge his muster, to call upon him be the buster, Come over here now, bust them good. One, two, chops down like wood, like trees chopped in the forest fall. And now, forevermore, the mole shall be your resting place, a place of peace and slumber. For those who do not sleep but rather lie like lumber, dead beneath the ground, dead from too much dying. Dying that proceeded inevitably and ended up in lying horizontal underneath the surface where one would have stood or sat or lain or breathed if only yet one could. But time enough spent now on death, for death is pointless, yes, and such is the ways of being a mortal man, someone who will die in time. But death fixation does no one good. Nobody enjoys that one should elect to drive a topic such as mortality into dust, why not let it pass and focus on the good? So heedeth he who listens with his shouldness ears instead of those his goodness ears, those goodness ears which fail always to recognize goodness when it stretches off for years. For limited is he in time, limited is he with clocks, unable to see time, unable to see past, the future blocks, the blocks of time that stretch out ahead of him, 
Though those their blocks, though those were thine, they cause him problems when they land in front, his path is blocked, he must turn now asunder. And when he does, he strikes upon the ground, foot landing with a thunder, a thunder that erupts a cloud of smoky dust from off the ground, the dusty ground and footprint hounds. Hounds will follow, smell the smells, they'll smell the smells of footprint well, and then they'll chase him down to hell, and say then he to him now be, stay there, you stay there. If you are he who is told to stay, this opportunity must not be let go away. Now time demands an action, an axis point from slabs to land as they go slab and clacking. You cannot stay there. Don't choose that course. The barriers before you break apart as though they were just coarse linen fibers. Barely in your way. They're made of words, you know. Just shake them. They'll go away. And once you're out and in the light, then tell us all about it. Because we don't know. We cannot see though we cannot possibly doubt it.